I hope you all are having a wonderful week. My name is Yupari, and I'd like to invite you into my studio today to guide you along the development involved in creating this portrait painting. And here we have our model for the week, Jen, and I'm going to keep an image of her to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as I develop the painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is just apply a thin wash of odorless mineral spirits onto my panel. And this is just going to help me uh, with the drawing process, and I'll get more into that later. The palette that I'll be using today is consisting of lead white, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and ivory black, and these are all oil paints. And of course the information on the brand and the particular type of oil paint that I'm using, as well as the brushes and the panel, will be typed in the description box below. So I'm going to be starting off with a size 2 filbert bristle brush and the reason I put that wash of mineral spirits in the beginning was so that I could just use something like raw umber, so I'm going to use this as my drawing color and I'll be able to make marks very uh, smooth, almost like using uh, vine charcoal. So I'm going to start off by not noting where I want the top of the head to be placed and the bottom of the head, just to give me an idea of the placement. And maybe I want to move this mark a little bit higher up. So we have just top and bottom, and it's alright if the paint is a little bit uh, runny like it is right there, uh, it's fine. I'm just using this to uh, sketch in where I want the portrait to be. So uh, this wash of mineral spirits will stay pretty fluid for about 20 minutes. So it gives you about a good 20 minutes, maybe your first sitting or something, uh, just to work with a few simple straight lines and angles and try to get an idea of where you want to place the head. Give yourself as much time as you need. You don't need to rush this. So here I have just a simple shape, just a simple ovoid looking shape, ovoid meaning like oval type shape for where I want to place the head and maybe I want to move the jaw up here. Not entirely sure, but something like this. So we're going to have the neck here. And then an angle for the jaw. Another angle here. So just using a few basic straight lines and angles, I want to get an idea of the pose. And I'm just trying to gather information gathering information such as the placement of the head, the overall basic shape that I'll be using to block in the head, and just the simple design for the big shapes fitting into this rectangular shape of a panel that I'm using. So let's get a little um, angle here just for the shirt. So something like this. And you want to be loose with it in the beginning. You really want to let this brush explore. Release all those tensions that you may have uh, with getting started with portrait painting or those tensions that you may have with painting uh, images of people. I certainly have those tensions uh, getting started with any kind of portrait. Always kind of self-aware of what these images look like. Especially because we see portraits, we see photographs of people all over the place. So any kind of little thing that's off in a portrait is a huge thing to the uh, human eye. And in the beginning, let's just forget about that. And let's just figure out where these shapes are going to be fitting. So I have this little uh, rectangular kind of looking shape. And I think this is where I want the head to fit now. So I want maybe a little less space here a little more space here, a little bit higher up onto the panel than lower, so I don't want the head to be centered. So this is about where I want the head to be placed. And don't worry about the paint uh, running down the surface like this. It is all right. This is only to get an idea of the placement of things. And of course, if you have 
a more absorbent surface than uh, this panel that I'm using, uh, such as a linen canvas or something like that, then it won't drip down like it is here, but I don't mind it. So let's block in just a simple mass. And this is a mass. A mass is just a big area of value or color. And so I'm just getting a simple mass. I'm going to unify this entire mass, this entire dark mass. And it can start out this simple, keeping your shape simple and easy for you to work with, simple and easy for you to understand. In the end of the day, it's your painting and treat it however you like. So here we have just a few simple masses. So let's do something for the face. So let's get an idea of the orientation of the head. So this is going to be the center line. Now the center line of the head is telling me that the head is turned three quarter relative to me. So that means that I'm seeing a little bit less of this side of the face and a little bit more of this side of the face. So we're going to be working our shapes from general to specific. So that was just one basic shape for the entire head. And then we drew in that center line. And now we're going to put in just a simple axis for the eyes. And right now, let's just keep it a, as a big blob, a big rectangular looking blob. And while we do that, let's mark down where we think that the top of the forehead is going to go. Somewhere about there. And the bottom of the nose somewhere about there and the mouth somewhere about here. While the surface is still uh, rather slick from the application of the mineral spirits, let's go and figure some stuff out uh, with the portrait. So let's make a little shape here. So this is going to be the corner of one eye socket. So this is the eye socket to the right of your screen. And then here's going to be another corner for the other eye socket. And I tell you what, a good tip is to try and keep your brush at the end of your hand like this. Uh, try not to draw like this, at least this early on. So this is like kind of like you're taking an exam or something. And this is more like you're just having fun, almost like a conductor. Keep it more like a conductor. So we have just a shape here for the inside corner of the eye socket and then another shape for the inside corner of the other eye socket. Not entirely sure if that's where they go, uh, but the nature of oil paint is such that it takes a while for it to dry. Even though the odorless mineral spirits may settle, uh, the oil paint will stay wet for you and it's very forgiving. You don't have to worry about making a mark in the wrong place. You can always go right over top of it. So here's the corner of the other eye socket. So I'll tell you what, now that I'm getting into this corner of the eye socket, I'm going to see maybe that there's an angle here for the side of the forehead. And just using straight lines and angles, so this comes out here, and this is the corner of one eye socket. And then we have the cheekbone, so this is one side of the cheekbone. And then here's the other side of the cheekbone. And so I'm thinking structurally now. This whole thing here is a plane. See that? It's a plane. And so I have this plane protruding out here, and that is the corner of the cheekbone. And I'm gathering information. I reiterate, I'm just trying to figure out, and, and I, I'm trying to get an idea of where these shapes are going to fit. So here's the brush that I used initially uh, to tone the surface of the panel. And I can also use it as a type of eraser. Pretty much like you would if you were using a vine charcoal and a piece of paper towel. So this would be kind of like the paper towel. Helping you get kind of a crisp edge. And then of course if you don't like this extra smudge there, then you can use an actual paper towel. That pulls that right off. It's the beauty of oil paint. It's really just it's so forgiving. So here is the, I would say this is the peak of convexity for the side of the face. And that is that this point is kind of like the tip of the curve. And then it starts to cut in a little bit like this. 
So it starts to cut in a tad bit. Then as we get around here, around the structure of the mouth, it'll start to cut in a little bit more. And when you're working the outside shapes, try to work with simple straight lines and angles and don't try to don't try to get it so perfect the first try. Just liberate that brush. Just see some big angles like that, big decisions, and just make them. And if they're wrong, they're wrong. Come back in and correct it. Oil paint is very forgiving. So the neck is pretty straight. Pretty much straight down like this. So let's look at the outside shape now more of the outside shape on this side. So we have some of the hair showing over here, goes up here, comes down, and we have a little uh, shape for the hair over here. I don't really want to focus on any kind of details, so it may look like I'm drawing out strands of hair, and I probably shouldn't be doing that, but I'm just trying to get an idea of where the top of this curve exists. So that's somewhat over here. I believe, and then it starts to curve down here. So let's cut back in on that with the paper towel. And cut back a little bit here. Just straight lines and angles. Not trying to get it perfectly correct at first. I'm going to give myself room to build up to the perfection. And if I never achieve that perfection, at least I would have left a unique mark and that unique mark would have had a type of elegance to it more than just if I were trying to say perfectly perfectly follow the little crisp outlines like that I'd rather have a bold brush stroke like this than a little like fearful brush stroke like that let's have a bold brush so the ear somewhat over here and I'm just going to use a single brush stroke to indicate where I think it's going to go so let's mask this in again because it's starting to drip and that's all right so this shape maybe comes down like that not entirely sure but I believe it comes down like that and then we have the shadow actually comes up to uh, the zygomatic bone, that is the cheekbone, so the shadow actually kind of comes up like this. Again, just big, simple, straight lines and angles. So the jaw is over here. Corner of the side of the face is about there. Let's go ahead and place another axis line for the axis of the eye. So the whole uh, eye socket structure we masked in with that big shape. Now let's go ahead and figure out the angle for the eyes. So let's see. So perspective tells me that if there's a parallel line here and then there's a parallel line, a parallel line here and that the model is pretty straight as in the head's not tilted too much and turned in this direction, all that means parallel line here for the eyes and then parallel line here for the nose tells me that these two lines should meet up at some point uh, to a vanishing point and that imagine imagine a, a railway so you have two parallel lines and then you have a train at the far distance and that railway would look something like this as the train tracks get further and further away. Now I'm exaggerating that because I'm turning the brushes, but you can kind of get uh, the idea that this angle would somewhat mimic this angle. This angle would somewhat mimic this angle, but they would still look like they would converge to a a uh, vanishing point at some point, even though it's not very evident to me right now. I'm still trying to be aware of that. So here we have just a shape for the eye, for one eye. And let's just keep the eyes as single brush strokes. 
And let's keep them like that for a while. And I'll tell you what, we're going to start putting in some information here now for the features. So here's like one little corner for the nose. See that? Maybe I just added like two or three brush strokes to the nose and I added just a brush stroke for the eyes. And then for the mouth, let's add in this little shape now. Now following the center line is going to be important, especially for the mouth. So the mouth uh, with a three quarter view, such as this one, is very deceptive because usually the tendency is to try and center the mouth towards us so that the mouth is looking at us. And uh, that's that's a tendency that that's very natural to try to center the mouth. But let's just try to make sure that the mouth we're seeing less of this side of the mouth and more of that side of the mouth, just like you would with the entire outside shape and just like you would with each individual feature. So we'll, we'll be seeing more of this side of the nose than that side of the nose and more of this side of the eye socket than we would be seeing of this side of the eye socket. More or less, we'd be seeing we'd be seeing more of this side of the eye socket on this corner than we would on this corner here. So let's look again at the features. The eyebrow, the shape of the eyebrow, is actually pretty useful for figuring out the placement of the eye socket structure within this big structure of the forehead. And the uh, eyebrows usually, not always, but usually will kind of give you this angle here. See this angle that I'm drawing in here? This angle here kind of mimics the actual structure of the eye socket wrapping around the eyeball. See this little angle here? Same kind of thing is going to happen here, but we're not going to see too much of that. Just a little bit. See? Just a little bit of this is showing and a lot more of this angle is showing. And another thing I look for is trying to make sure that the features fit within the parameters of the outside shape. And let's have fun while we do this. Let's not stress out about trying to get a perfect likeness right away. Let this brush be free. Look at that. I'm holding the brush from the back, just using straight lines and angles. Let's try to find form with freedom. As the artist Nelson Shanks once said, once said to find form with freedom. So again, I'm just etching in just a little shape here for that structure that will eventually go into the side of the forehead. And I'm just etching in little bits of information just to help me uh, figure out with more clarity the placement of the light and dark shapes because I'm really going to want to focus on the large shapes and large patterns of light and dark. So here is a little dark shape here for the zygomatic bone. So that's a cool way of saying the cheekbone. So if anyone asks you what that is, you're like, that's the zygomatic area. So that means that's the cheekbone. So this is the cheekbone. And let's just make sure that this angle is mimicked on the other side. So this side here. If you want to know another interesting word, this is the orbicularis oris. This little shape here beneath the mouth. Look at this little dark shape here. So it'll make a little W looking thing. That's the orbicularis oris. Another cool word to think about. And then there's a little dark shape that continues down here. Very simple. Now let's get into some color and let's use color to further facilitate the drawing. So that means let's use color uh, to try and further develop the drawing. So I'm going to be using a lizard and crimson and the lead white. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you might know what's coming up next. And that would be usually kind of counterintuitive, but sap green. So I like to use a mixture between a lizard and crimson and sap green to get a flesh tone. And this isn't going to be the final color that I would want to apply onto the flesh tone, but it's going to be something to get me started. 
depending on the temperature that I want. So this might be too hot. So I might just use a little bit more of the sap green into the mixture. Something like this. Quick and easy way to get a flesh tone mixture. So I'm going to dilute this a little bit uh, with a medium. And my medium is going to be one part stand oil to four parts mineral spirits. And if you want to make that mixture on your own, that would be just a combination. You can say maybe one teaspoon of stand oil to four teaspoons of mineral spirits. That's all it is. So I'm going to use this now to help me uh, facilitate the drawing. And so what does that mean? So that means things like this, where I want to add a little bit more refinement to the shape, I will do that now with the color. So this color will act kind of like an eraser. So there's just a little shape here. So let's talk about some more cool names. So this shape here, this is the glabella. So this is the glabella. Let's look at the nature of the glabella. So this is usually a good thing to look at when trying to capture the likeness of the model. Everyone has a very unique and distinct glabella. So this one, let's see. It's a little bit wider down here. So I'm going to add a little bit more space. It's a little bit wider there and a little bit more narrow closer to uh, the nasal bone here. So let's just fill the rest of this color in for the forehead. And don't worry, we will come back in uh, with more refined colors later. So this is going to be kind of like my testing ground. So I'm kind of paving way uh, for the application of the more exacting colors. And again, let's just keep this very fun and simple. Don't want to stress out over this. We want this to be fun. And whenever we make a mistake, uh, let's not keep a mentality of it's all over, uh, that, oh no, the eye's in the wrong place, I can't draw, I give up. Instead of that mentality, let's just say that, you know, mistakes happen, and they're going to happen. It's part of life. But let's learn from them. Why not? So let's treat our mistakes as learning tools, positive learning tools. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover a little bit more of this shape now. So there's a little corner here. And then this plane is pretty broad here. So it's a very distinct plane. I'm going to follow through on the other side. Very distinct plane. So very strong features, elegant features here. This comes out something like this. And this comes up a little more this way. And it's all right if uh, we lose a little bit of the information we had before. So we're going to actually be using the raw umber drawing color as our dark. So we're going to be just figuring out these shapes with the flesh tone mixture that we talked about and with the raw umber. So again, I'm going to cut back into here. And here we have the philtrum. So zygomatic region, orbicularis oris region, philtrum, and the glabello. Some names to add to your vocabulary there. So let's just cover this. So while we do this, let's look at that outside shape. So this comes down like this and then curves downwards. Curves a little more. Just looking at the nature of these shapes. So it curves inwards a little bit more there. Something like this. Don't want to be too specific too soon yet. Just want to keep my shapes, my shapes simple and easy for me to understand. And here's a little plane here for the chin. It's a little light plane. Then let's just add a little bit of the glimpses of light here. 
Very simple. Now back in with the drawing color. Let's further figure out where the bottom of this chin goes. Somewhere about there. In the corner of the mouth, somewhere about here. And here is the corner of the side of the eye. So I'm just working kind of the corners of each each set of features or the corner of each feature. One corner here. Let's look at the corner of the nose. Using a vertical gesture, this comes out to about here. And maybe straight down here. And the shape comes in like this. Something like that. So now let's use the drawing color. Cut into here and get the shape of the tear duct. See, look at that, just big bold brush stroke. You want to be fearless with this. You want to enjoy the process. So the shape of the, let's see, the shadow for the eye socket comes down like this. So I just want to focus on these shapes and get these shapes as, as accurately as I possibly can. So I'm going to use a piece of paper towel. I'm going to roll it into some type of maybe like the shape that you would with a kneaded eraser. I'm going to go and I'm going to cut in a little bit of light here for the sclera, for the white of the eye. And I'm going to follow through on the other side. Cut a little bit there. I want to keep it loose, bold, and expressive yet give yourself room to build onto this and make it more exacting later. So here we have the top of the eye. Again, I'm just trying to get a grasp on where these shapes are or where they could be. You can't start finished, can you? You have to have a process that you enjoy and a process that you can understand and that you can work with. So here's the bottom of the lower eyelid, just a little shape for that. I'll tell you what, this area is very dark, so I'm just going to let it be dark. And on the other side, we have the dark for the top of the eye, this dark right here. And then this gets darker over here. And then tell you what, this whole shape is pretty dark. And a little bit bigger. Now with a little size one round brush with uh, just a little bit of the white and raw umber, we're gonna get a uh, kind of a gray that we'll use for the color of the sclera. So the sclera is this area of the eye right here, so the light of the eye. So I just want to get an idea of where the pupil is going to fit. And I'm going to use this, uh, the sclera, to kind of help me indicate the orientation of the pupil. And what I want to do is do to one side what I do to the other. So I'm going to move to the other side of the eye now and place in just a, just a brush markers, a brush marker two, to just figure out the light of the eye. And it doesn't take much, just a few little brush strokes. And then you're really going to want to stand back or sit back as far as you can to see how they're reading at a distance because that that's really what is going to create an impact is what these shapes look like at a distance. And it's important to try to practice an economy of means 
Uh, meaning, try to do the most you can with the least you can. So try and practice using the least bits of information to describe the most information that you can. And by doing so, you'll end up making your portrait that much more powerful or whichever painting that you're working on. If each little piece is that much more significant than the whole being the sum of the parts is going to be affected in a very positive manner. So a little more light over here. And just using the raw umber assures me that I'm not going to be going straight black with any of these shapes. Now the issue with painting something like this straight black, even though it may look like that on the computer screen or on the photo reference, is that straight black is the darkest you can go. And would you really want to put that dark anywhere on the painting? You'd want to have some type of atmosphere uh, to the surrounding shapes. So let's look at the angles for the eye. So we have a very definitive mark here for the tear duct. So that's about right. Uh, so here's the peak of convexity somewhere up here. So we have angle one, and we have angle two, and then we have angle three. Just three simple straight lines and angles giving us the orientation of the uh, shape of the eye. And then this angle is a little more sharp, a little further down like that. Now let's get into some of the big color shapes. So I'm going to use ivory black, alizarin, maybe a little more ivory black, and the raw umber. So I don't want to have a mixture that's too dark, but I don't want to have a mixture that's too light or too red either. So let's use a little bit of ultramarine blue. And so a little tip with the darks, uh, try to use the least amount of medium possible. So I'm just using uh, the paint by itself. I'm not using any kind of thinners or any kind of uh, medium solutions or anything like that. It's just the paint itself. And um, and I, I think that's it's kind of something that I've been building up to with my paintings. Uh, before in previous videos I would start the darks with thin layers, thin washes. And then after experimenting I've just been kind of trying to use no medium with darks and it actually kind of helps get more of a, a depth of field or more of a rich a richer color and so while I'm adding in this shape of the dark I'm also going to be uh, continuing to develop the drawing so here's the little angle for the side plane of the cheekbone and this comes down I just want to make sure that I have these shapes as well established as I can. So here's the, say, maybe about here is the side of the, uh, the jawbone. The ear probably comes to about here. Notice the horizontal gesture that I made. Something about there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that color again. So let's remix it. Ivory black, lizard and crimson, a little bit of ultramarine blue. So let's go back into this. So let's get the shape for the back of the neck. So this maybe comes out to about here. Oil paint is so wonderful. It's very forgiving. This will stay wet for quite some time, enabling me to be a little indecisive sometimes. Maybe I want this shape here. Maybe I want it further out doesn't matter. You can always come back in. So let's get this shape a little bit further back here. And so I'm going to try and push the uh, 
shape of the hair a little bit further out than need be than I need to because I'm going to come back in later with the background color. So now let's get a dark for the uh, shadow side of the face. So let's start with start with our drawing color. Notice I just switched brushes. So I'm, I'm going to have a brush designated for the flesh tones or a couple brushes for that and then a brush for the shadow a brush for this dark and then of course a brush for the background. So just with the raw umber and a little bit of let's use some cadmium orange. So let's see just raw umber cadmium orange and I'm going to let this value get pretty close to this value on the palette just so I have an idea of what it will look like on the painting. So that value might be might be all right maybe a tad bit warmer so let's use the cadmium red and only a little bit so now I'm just distributing this value down here and just like I mentioned with the darker darks that I don't use too much medium I'm actually trying not to use uh, that much medium in general I find that I tend to uh, use more medium than need be. So here's this dark right here. And this dark shape goes here. So let's see. This is the under portion of the mouth, so the orbicular sores we were talking about. Here's the side of the chin, cuts into here see so I'm just looking at the shape and tell you what so with the light and dark shapes it really helps to squint so at this point maybe closing one eye and then squinting can help get an idea of these shapes a little more cadmium orange into this mixture I'm really fighting the uh, tendency to dilute the paint I'm trying not to do that. So let's see, just with the paint itself. A little more cadmium orange. Let's cover this now. So the, uh, the image was taken under natural light. So meaning uh, from a sky window. So the light's probably coming from about this direction and it's fairly cool it's fairly cold so uh, my guess is that a cool light will introduce a lot of cool cool ish flesh tones up here and then maybe just optically we will see less cool colors here and a little warmer here that's kind of a trait or an aspect of painting under natural light you get these really uh, rich and warm shadows. So I just added a little bit of cadmium red, a little more for this area here. Let's get more of a specific shape for that. And let's not forget the ear. Let's put in that shape for the ear. Now let's get something down for the background. I'm actually going to get this shape a little more exacting or at least push it a little further out there. So for the background, let's see. Switching of course to a different brush. Here's a case where I will dilute uh, the paint a little bit. So I'm going to, so I diluted it with my stand oil odorless mineral spirits combination so i have let's see i'm going to start off with ultramarine blue and ivory black and of course with the white so a little more ultramarine blue ivory black is a nice let's look at it as a muted dark so it kind of brings down the saturation of a, of a blue so it's more like a muted blue 
let's see is this color working so i'm just looking at this color its value in relation to the hair and i think it's working so i'm going to go ahead and just cut back into here might need to get a tad bit more on the greenish side so i'll add yellow ochre a little bit of yellow ochre into that mixture so let's cut back into this shape so this curves up like this wraps around then curves down here then curves inward and it's fairly straight over here fairly straight and this cuts in so when you're first blocking in your colors uh, like I'm doing now there tends to be kind of a shock factor like oh my goodness the painting has just changed completely and that's the kind of effect that happens when you're working with mass with large masses of color and value and uh, that's a very useful way of working with oil paint since oil paint takes forever to, to dry meaning about a day or so it gives you a lot of time to to work to draw with color whereas other mediums require a much longer uh, developed linear drawing in this case we can draw with mass these large masses so I'll tell you what so there's kind of a shock factor uh, when you're first blocking in your large masses of color and uh, that you kind of just get used to it, the way that it looks you get acclimated to the color decisions that you make and then you tweak them so you'll tweak the background color in relation to uh, the shadow color or you'll, you'll tweak the shadow color in relation to the flesh tone colors but it's all about relating each shape of color to the surrounding shapes so i added a little bit more cobalt teal so we have a strong angle here so i want to make sure that i get that angle notice how we're drawing out the shapes with the color so this comes fairly straight down here and maybe this cuts in a little more here and this cuts in right there not quite sure but again I'm just trying to get a I get acclimated to these large color shapes and then I can come back in and add more specificity into these areas now let's work some of the planes of the face so we're gonna think about the uh, large overall structure and we're gonna construct uh, the specific shapes on top of the large underlying structure so let's look for the large underlying structure so let's start off with some of the the half tone so I'm going to be using now a lizard crimson the lead white so if you're wondering why I'm using lead white uh, it is because it's a transparent white so it allows me to use more of it and so uh, so I'll tell you what so lead white or any kind of transparent white is very useful for portraiture because you're trying to get these uh, uh, deep rich rich warm colors and and it's okay if some of the residue from the previous colors are here in the mixture it's just allowing me to get kind of a uh, less saturated color but in any case if I were to be painting outside or in plein air or something like that I, that would be a case for me to use titanium white because I don't mind getting more uh, brighter more flat colors more opaque colors uh, but with portraiture I really want some more transparent colors so I'm going to be creating a little value scale here on the palette and I'm going to utilize what is on the palette right now notice this tone here that I'm mixing and it's actually this might actually be kind of useful for the half tone or maybe it'll be useful not entirely sure for this little side plane on the side of the nose eh, might need to get a little darker so more alizarin crimson and the sap green back to the alizarin crimson 
Let's use cobalt teal that time. So a little cobalt teal. So now let's go back to the, say, cadmium orange. And again, I'm not really using too much medium with these darker values, but I'll probably use more for the lighter values. So let's see if this value works. Maybe it needs to be a little bit cooler, so let's just take some of the background. Why not? Let's get that value. And let's get this shape of value first. And then, given the nature of oil painting, patiently waiting for us to come back and construct. Then, after we have these shapes, large shapes of values, then we'll come back in and start to start to add more refinement. A little darker here. So let's look at the side plane on this area here. So let's just treat it as a kind of like a sculpture. So we're kind of like in a sculpture carving out one side. So this is a very clean cut, a thin slab. So back to the shadow brush, I'm going to, while I have this uh, delineation, I'm going to come back in and try to make it a little bit more exacting. Not quite to a finish yet, but still kind of just building onto it. So this curves inwards a little bit more. And then let's just cover this whole area with the shadow. And then we'll come back in with the halftone brush. And let's get some of these subtleties. And then let's let this build onto the side here. So we see that we're getting some turning values. So these are the half tones that are going to be describing the curvature of the light into the dark. So let's, let's level this whole area now. So there's a big dark over here, and then there's a big half tone over here, and then there's a shape right about here, cuts in right here for the chin. So let's just level this out now. So I'm trying to get the overall curvature along with getting the large planar structures. So let's take the uh, light light brush. So let's use a little medium with it. So it's just a little medium. See now it's going to flow a little more. So let's get some of these planes now. This cuts in like this. And we have a lighter plane somewhere about there. And of course, let's make it a little darker. So I'm just focusing on these large planes, large planes of color. A little more sap green into that mixture. Back to the lead white, cobalt teal. I'm gonna dilute this a little more. So applying a little more medium to this brush. Let's try and get this plane here. So this is a plane for the chin. And let's add a little more cobalt teal, and a little more of the white, maybe more cobalt teal, and the white. So let's get this light plane here. Again, just thinking of these large planes. Now I'm going to switch to the halftone brush. And I like this color, so let's take some of this color, add some cobalt teal to it. And then let's just use it now to maybe get a little more warmth. So let's get some more of these colors here. So I'm going to use it now to try and get the volume, a little bit of volume for the cheek. And this is, let's think of this as a building process. Now you don't start finished, do you? You start with a process. 
So this is going to be the process. And let's not think about it so much as a how-to. This is how a portrait must be done. So let's not think about this is how a portrait must be done. But let's feel our way around these shapes kind of like a sculptor would. And let's think more about, let's think more about the fundamentals. Let's think more about the principles involved in uh, creating form and paint however we want to paint to create those forms. If you wanted to create a very finished linear drawing, then uh, apply thin glazes to get these effects and do it. If that's what you want to do as long as you enjoy it I tell you what the worst thing that could possibly happen in painting is not enjoying the process that's the worst thing that can happen imagine you're the best painter ever you just hate it you hate painting so much you're bored of it but you're the best why why do that to yourself instead find a way of working that you enjoy Find a way of working that gives you meaning. And then you will inevitably, you will build onto that. You will build there. There's a little more light here. Add a little more light there. Now I'm starting to use more paint. Let's see, a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe some more sap green. I'm using the sap green a lot today. So maybe more sap green, why not? Let's get this shape here. And back to the white. Let's build this light. A little more light onto the nose. And this is about just building the volumes for the portrait. And then after we can, ha after we have the volumes, uh, then we can start to apply more refinements into the picture. Maybe some cadmium orange for the corner here. A little more cadmium orange. Adding it right on top of that mixture that we had before. And then, even though it may be hard to see, a corner like this is actually turning further away from the light, so it's going to get darker. Maybe not that warm, so let's use some more cobalt teal and the lead white. Tell you what, studying structure and studying form kind of teaches you to know what to look for. So I see this lighter region here, so I kind of left it there. And then an area, of course, over here is getting darker because it's going away from the light. But this is curving even further away from the light, even though it's hard to see on the image, this would be darker up here. So now let's add some more planes. So this is kind of one round plane, but there's actually another plane coming in like this and then curves out like this. So this plane that I'm talking about, it has a lighter region. So let's switch to the light light brush. Maybe some cobalt teal, a little more lead white. So it has a lighter plane right here. So this is the frontal ridge and it's receiving much more light. See this plane is wrapping around here, giving us uh, some values that are describing the front of the skull emanating from the forehead here. Very slight, but it's still noticeable. So then of course this value needs to get a little lighter, but not, this needs to get a little lighter, but not quite as light as that. And I wanted to make it warmer, but maybe too warm there. So let's use the white to cool it down a little bit and to bring down the value. Notice how we're getting some subtlety there now. A 
let's just let that carry through over there. So it's more of the lead white and maybe a tad bit of the cadmium yellow. Let's get some of these lights now. It's very nice and bright. So I'm going to add maybe a little more of the lead white. Try and get that value. And then it kind of gets a little further down here and starts to dissipate as it rolls off to the side plane there. Maybe a little more cadmium orange here for this plane here. Just a little more. So we're still going to work on these large planes a little bit more and I'm just going to try to eliminate some glare using this large uh, synthetic flat brush. So I'm just using it to uh, kind of move the paint or herd it in this direction to try and eliminate some of the glare. Now back to the halftone brush. Uh, from looking looking at it from a distance and squinting my eyes, there's a dark here that uh, needs to be described a little further. So let's see, I'm going to be using a lizard crimson raw umber and sap green, maybe a tad bit of cadmium yellow. But let's just think about the value. So the value is somewhere in this family. So let's just big bold brush stroke. Let's just get that in there. Might need to be a little darker. So more raw umber, yellow ochre, and cadmium orange. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get that value. And it's all right if we lose a little bit of the information in there. That's why we didn't spend so long trying to perfectly uh, carve out the uh, outlines for the features. We're going to do that with mass and with tone. So a little more sap green into that mixture. Let's just try and get this shape. So again, I'm not afraid to lose any bits of information in here. Rather, I'm trying to construct the volume of these shapes. So that looks about right. So now I need to go back in with the hair color. Hopefully that color is still on this brush. And it is. So I can carve right back in there. Let's just use it for the eyebrow. Take a risk here. Just a shape. Simple shape there. So now I'm going to use the paint that's still on the brush to further uh, delineate this shape for the nose here. So just going in there and making a decision for where I think the nose is going to fit. Again, I'm really trying to figure this out with paint. I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this whole thing out. Add a little bit more cadmium orange. Let's try and get this side plane. Have you ever seen a painting or a portrait painting that you see it from a distance and you're like, wow, that's such a nice painting. And then you approach it and you're like, what? But how? So that's the kind of effect that we're going to be going after uh, with this particular approach to painting to get that effect, to get it to read its best at a distance. And then as the viewer gets closer and closer to the painting, they're like, but how? So really that's the, the effect that we're trying to get. And the way we can get that with oil paint is just to work with these simple tones. I'm going to add in just a little glimpse of light there for the wing of the nose, don't really know if it's there. I'm being honest with you, I don't know if it's there. But I'm not afraid to try and to see if that shape belongs there. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'll just move it. 
It's all about making these big decisions, not being afraid to do them, and not being afraid to implement the changes that may come if they are in the wrong spot. Now it's a little darker down here. And I'm going to just add a little more light there. So let's go ahead and get some of the lighter lights. And let's get this light plane here. Maybe some some more alizer in there. So let's just get the effect of this volume. Again, not sure if it's entirely correct. Really not sure, but I'm just trying to reason with the oil paint. Let's see, maybe there's a plane here that's missing. Some more information there. Let's see, this value perhaps needs to get a little lighter there. So now for the lips. I'm going to just soften this a little more. So now the simple structure for the lips. Let's start out uh, with the halftone brush and add a little bit of a laser and crimson into it and some cadmium red. Very simple. And let's, let's kind of guesstimate where that lip is going to go. Maybe somewhere about there. Again, keeping center line in mind here. So it's center line is somewhere here. The middle of the mouth is somewhere there. So let's add in this light here on the top of the middle of the upper lip. It comes down to about here. Just a little touch for that. And let's go back to this mixture uh, for the mouth. And let's just try and get the mouth blocked in. It's the simple shape for that. Let's get a little bit more of the dark value. A little corner of the mouth maybe there. A little corner of the mouth there. Don't know. I really don't. But I'm just trying to reason with these shapes. Make a mark, I tell you what, make a mark, stand back. Make another mark, stand back. And in doing that, you're going to really you're going to really benefit from taking in the big picture rather than just start trying to stay there and looking at it at the painting for about two hours being six inches away from the painting and then you back up and you're like, no, what happened? And that's what we're trying to avoid. So let's add a little bit more dark. So let's some sap green. A little bit more dark here. And I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. You can almost see it as four brush strokes. One, two, three, and four. And it's easy for me to move four brush strokes rather than a complicated array of 50 or so brush strokes for a mouth that might not even be in the right place. But I just want my eye to be able to pick up the information that's being presented in front of it and then reason with it. So let's add a little bit of warmth into here. So let's get this bottom shape here for the bottom of the eye. And I, like I said, it's all right. Some information there is lost. It is all right. We'll just come right back in there. Then this cuts down a little further here. It's more of a dark shape here. Cuts in, so we have one, two, three, four. Now let's go ahead and uh, get more of this value for the side of the cheekbone. Maybe a little more alizarin crimson. Let's try and get that shape. Something like that. Let's 
can use the fan brush to eliminate some glare. Now back to the shadow brush. If I can find it. Here's the shadow brush. Hopefully I still have some of the shadow. Yes, I do. All right, so let's see. This comes out a little further here. And then this shape, it's very hard to tell from the image, but I think this comes a little further up like this. I'm going to use the fan brush again. Now switching back to the halftone brush, I'm going to just try and get some somewhat of a middle warm kind of pinkish color. So this is similar to what I used for the lips, just a little lighter and cooler. So let's get this transitioning value. So I'm not trying to search any, I'm not trying to search beneath the surface for something that isn't right there in front of me. So I'm not trying to search beneath the surface for something that isn't uh, readily apparent to me. So I'm trying to just observe these shapes of color as I see them and make these decisions. So it's a little cooler there. And again, it's all right if some of these shapes get lost. Let's see, a little more light, maybe not that pink. So I'm going to wash this brush. So with the Mineral Spirits, I just dipped it into the Mineral Spirits and I'm just um, drying it off on a piece of paper towel. Let's see if it's, yeah, it's relatively clean. I got some of the pink off. So let's use more of the lead white. And just that, add it to this color. So now it's going to be a little bit cooler. So let's put in these lights. So this comes out to about here. So this is the top plane of the cheekbone. Let's just throw some of this light into here. Try and get that structure. Don't worry, we'll come back in and add more refinement. So there's a more of a pinkish tone here for the warmth of the cheeks as it starts to turn into the side plane. So let's do that. Let's add some more warmth. Very simply, just like that. And as time progresses, I'm going to end up using even more paint until we get to the little final, final little touches here. Then we'll, we'll use less paint. A little more light here. A little more light right about here. Then we have some cooler notes. So I'll use the cobalt teal and some of the background, letting some of the residue that was on the paintbrush from these colors. Some cooler notes are existing up here. Note meaning that I'm um, just observing the color uh, note in relation to the surrounding color notes. It's a little cooler here. A little cooler. And then of course it's going to be much more pink here. So let's just go ahead and add that pink. So with the cadmium red, A little more cadmium red. And this, though it looks very bright, this is still kind of like in a half tone region. It just looks brighter because it's a little more saturated. So let's add that, that warm color. And let's add some of these colors here. So a little glimpse of light that we have there, but not too much. Back with the half tone brush. And 
now that we've worked out some of the larger planes for the uh, structures of the the face, let's get into some of the smaller shapes now. So I'm back to a, a size one round brush. So I'm going to use this to help me uh, add some more information into the uh, features. So with just a little combination of ultramarine blue and a little bit of raw umber and a touch of lizard and crimson. Now we're going to put in some more fine tuned curves. So let's start off with the peak of convexity. So this shape right here. And now let's work our way across. So here's the peak of convexity. Now the lowest part to the curve is somewhere over here. So just a single brush stroke for that, just to indicate where it is. And there's going to be a little bit more warmth to that, actually. So let's get some, some more lizard and crimson. So let's just sneak some more warmth into this shape. Just so it's barely noticeable. Now I'm going to add some more ultramarine blue and some more raw umber to get the dark back. So this cuts in. A little bit like this. So it's fairly round, but it's not a lemon shape. Now this comes up a little further. So we have the upper eyelid, but it's fairly dark. When I squint down, it's hardly even noticeable. Pretty much just a dark shape here. So this comes down here. And then we have the dark here for the corner of the side of the eye. And after standing back, I see that I can probably put in some more dark for the pupil now. Also a little dark for the pupil. Now I'm going to use a combination of raw umber, white, and a tad bit of cobalt teal to get uh, more light now for the bottom right here. So you really want to stand back when you're doing the small, when you're painting the small shapes. Only put in what information is necessary or what information you think is necessary. Uh, let's make a little sharper edge that's a little more sharp right here. And now I see a little bit of, a little more light here as the eye is wrapping around. So let's try to put some indications of that. And with less pressure, I'm getting a darker value as I move up the sclera. Very subtle. Now with the dark brush, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into some of the flesh tone mixtures that I had. But I assure you, this won't be a, any bit more elaborate than my alizarin and crimson or sap green mixture. So let's put this dark right here underneath the lower eyelid. Start with the dark value. I'm letting some of the paint that was already on there just mix into this. Very softly applying the paint. I'm applying the paint in a very soft manner. So it gets darker as we get closer to here, so I'll apply more pressure. And then let's lighten it up a little bit as we get closer to the tear duct. Just a little bit. And then at the tear duct, let's use just a little bit of the light lights that were already on the palette. So just a little touch of light here. Just a little touch of light right here. From a distance, that's the most uh, noticeable light shape to me, this little light shape right there. 
So I'm going to use a little bit more cobalt teal and a tad bit more of the white. And I'm going to paint in, or maybe let's let's put some ultramarine blue actually. So let's get the highlight for the pupil. So it's following this little axis here for the eye. So it's somewhere about here. Something like that. Now with the other eye, we're going to do the same kind of thing. So back with the dark value. Let's find the peak of convexity of the curve. So it's somewhere about here. So let's paint that in there. So you gotta make a brush stroke and then stand back. So that's that's about right, that angle. And then we have the corner here. So I'm letting the uh, the paint that's on the brush mix with the paint that's underneath a little bit. It may look like the layer underneath is dry sometimes just because of the uh, amount of force that I apply, meaning not applying that much pressure. Uh, but I assure you that I'm letting some of the paint here mix with the paint underneath. So this angle might come up a little higher. Something like that. And then there's a little continuation of this dark shape back here. So now let's switch to the, the brush with the raw umber, white, and a tad bit of cobalt teal mixture. So right here. We're seeing a little more of the white of the eye. Just remember that value is not like a bright white value. It's a very neutral, almost like a half tone, really. And we're getting a little glimpse of light on the other side. Very tiny. But that might be too much, so let's switch to the dark brush. And cover that up. It's all right. Oil paint is very forgiving. Now I'm going to uh, put a little more white into the the brush that I used for the sclera. Maybe a little more ultramarine blue again. So here we have the highlight of the eye, pretty close to the pupil. Actually, let's put the let's put the iris in there. I meant to say pretty close to the iris. Iris pupil. I get those two confused all the time. With the dark of the eye, so the pupil. That's what it is. The pupil. You can barely see it there but it's there. Now let's add the uh, light mixture again. Somewhere right about there. Right by the pupil. Now let's add a little cadmium red to that mixture. And let's get this light here. little light on the the top plane of the tear duct and then I'm going to add a little bit more of the flesh tone mixture to this brush and we're seeing some kind of a little glimpse of light right here very simply and that kind of information I'm gathering primarily by just standing back and then observing what is the most important pieces of information. So you can stand back and just get your first impression of the shape of the eye, the structure of the eye, and only place in what you really need to. So let's add a little bit of a darker value 
Squinting also helps uh, see the smaller bits of information and only the essential bits that you need. So I added a little bit more of the half tone that was on my brush. This is probably used for uh, the shadow actually. But I'm letting it mix with the paint that's already on the panel. So it's getting lighter when I apply less pressure. And then let's add even a little more of the color of the flesh tones from the palette. Let's just lighten the shape up a little bit. So with the nose, I'm gonna use the same uh, two brushes that I was using for the eyes. And I'm going to try and figure out the shape for the cast shadow of the nose. So let's see. I'm going to try and mix that color that's beneath the nose. Uh, so it's just the combination of a lizard and crimson and the sap green along with the white. To try and get this mixture back. So that's close enough to start to draw with. So let's first pay attention to the center line. So the center line is about here. So we can start from there. So this is going to turn upwards like this, following the center line. And then it's going to go back down again. So I'm just trying to pay attention to the shape that the shadow is making. So I'm going to go back uh, to the shadow color. So I have the shadow color on the other size one round brush. So let's see if this is, that's probably too dark. Maybe some, some cadmium orange to add some more warmth and to lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, about that. All right, so the shadow it's coming, it's coming out a little bit here. A little slight angle there. And then it turns up. Something like that. And then this is going to be pretty important, this side of the nose. So since the pose is turned, the model is turned three quarter relative to us, we want to make sure that we don't accidentally pull this, no this nose so that it's facing us more. We really want that three quarter view. So let's place the shadow in here, the angle of the shadow on the wing of the nose. And I tell you what, there's probably a little more warmth there. So let's add some cadmium red into that mixture. A little bit more warmth right here. So that brings us to the dark of the nostrils, the dark accents. So let's first flatten out this shape. Now we're gonna add a little more ivory black into this mixture with a tad bit of raw umber. So here we have a dark, let's see, that's my first guess. Somewhere over here. And then the other dark, somewhere over here. So I'm kind of looking up at the model, so that's why I'm able to see a little bit of the dark of the nose but not too much, just a little glimpse. So let's go back to this shadow shape. So it's going down a little bit there. And now we have a shadow coming up here. You see that? 
This is the bulb of the nose. So let's add a little more warmth to it. Not too much. So let's try and paint the shadow of the bulb of the nose. Just very gently. And again, I'm allowing the paint that's underneath uh, to mix with these colors. So let's make this corner a little darker here so we can describe the light on the wing of the nose there. Very subtle. The reason I like these size one round brushes is it's almost like having a sharpened pencil really. So let's get back to those flesh tone mixtures. Let's add a little bit of the light that we're seeing here for the wing of the nose. Less pressure makes it not as bright. So a little lighter up here. More pressure. Less pressure near the corner of the wing of the nose since it's not as light. So switching back to the dark brush, I'm going to get some, some more cadmium orange. And let's just paint in a reflected light here. So reflected light, it's a good time to implement a color change instead of a value change. So I changed the warmth here just a little bit to show some of the reflected light. Maybe some here too. Just a little bit. Now with the flesh tone brush, I'm going to add some of the light on the other side, on the other wing of the nose, but I want to make sure not to make this wing as big as this one. I'm going to be seeing less of this wing, and that's because the model is a three-quarter view relative to me. So very little pressure. And now I'm going to make it a little lighter here. So a little more pressure here. Now that's a good area for a lost edge. So that edge is almost lost there so I'm going to leave that be and I'm going to add a little more alizarin crimson to this brush. I'm going to go ahead over here and add another half tone for the bulb of the nose. So very lightly almost hatching there. So now, now hatching is like hatch marks with a pencil not like hatching an egg, but like when you're drawing with a pencil, you make lines in this direction, make lines in the other direction. So that's what I'm doing there. That's kind of an old master drawing thing. But nevertheless, all I did was apply less pressure there just to make it a little darker. So I'm adding a little more white and cadmium orange. And now we're gonna get the icing on the cake. So we're gonna get the little highlight here. Don't want it to be too bright. So just a little glimpse of highlight there. And then the highlight is trailing up here. A little bit lighter here. So with a combination of ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a tad bit of ivory black. Now we're going to have the dark accents for the lips. So let's follow the center line of the mouth. So the center line is somewhere about here. Notice the vertical gesture. So let's see, it's somewhere over here. Just want to make sure that the center line is clarified first. So now we have the accents for the lips. So we have a little accent here. So I'm going to use a vertical gesture. So this is telling me that the corner of the mouth is a little further. 
maybe there. And again, this is an instance where you really want to make a brush stroke and then stand back. All right, so the other one is actually pretty close to there. Huh, I guess my first guess was all right, maybe a little lower here. Something like that. Then let's do something. Let's make a brush stroke. Spin the brush a little bit here. One smooth continuous mark. Let's see what happens. More pressure over here. Let's experiment with that. Now with the flesh tone color, let's go ahead and uh, clarify this shape a little bit. Almost looks kind of neat, but let's add some clarity to it. But still keep some of the looseness of this painting. So we're going to keep it definitely painterly, but we're going to just add a little, a little more information. So I'm going to add some alizarin crimson onto the dark brush. So the brush that was used for those dark shapes. So let's add some alizarin crimson and some cadmium red. Maybe some more cadmium red. Let's see. So we have a dark right here. And remember, the mouth is in three quarter. All of the features are following the center line. So we're going to see more of this side of the mouth and less of this side. So this is going to come up a little bit here. Interesting shape comes down. It might even go up a little higher, maybe to about there. And then this comes out a little more. So we're seeing less of this shape. Allow this shape to mimic this one, but you're seeing a little less of this one. So this side's much more compressed because of the perspective. That is because the model is at a three quarter view relative to us. So back to the flesh tones, I'm going to use just a little more cobalt teal. Just a little more cobalt teal. So let's get this, this curve. Something like that. And a little more cobalt teal. Let's get this light here for the filtrum. Just a few little touches of light. Doesn't take much. And a little more light here. We're trying to say the most we can with the least we can. Let's use some more cadmium red and the white. So I'll tell you what, if you don't want to use lead white, if you feel uncomfortable with that, there are other transparent whites that are not lead white, such as zinc white. And Gamblin also makes a flake white replacement, and flake white is another transparent white. So flake white replacement uh, does not have any lead, and it's still a fairly transparent color. So the white and the cadmium red. So here we have the little light on the lip. Don't need too much. And a little more cadmium red. And a tad bit more alizarin crimson. Let's just add a little more chroma. Right there, a touch of chroma. I'm going to add a little more of the flesh tone mixture and just a little more cobalt teal again. This mixture or this angle is still a little too high up there. Not a problem. See that? We can easily bring that back down. And then let's actually take the time to make this shape a little bit sharper there. Sorry, I just touched that there. 
That's all good. Paint is forgiving. The oil paint is forgiving. Let's add this dark in here. And actually, you know how they say we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents? Might have been a happy accident because I almost, I actually almost forgot. There's a little bit of light up here. Just a little bit of light. So let's add some more cadmium red. I'm glad I messed up right there. So there's a little more light here. A little more here. So now we can go back to the light. A little bit of cobalt teal and some of the white. Let's paint in that light. Goes a little higher up. Now let's add just a little more information into the hair. I like keeping hair very simplified, but at some point I think it does necessitate at least a few curls here and there. So let's let's do that. So with the ivory black, and again, I'm not using any medium with the uh, the dark shapes. No medium at all. So this brush hasn't had any bit of mineral spirits or uh, mineral spirits mixture. So let's get this dark. So right about here is going to be the darkest dark that I'm going to want. And then I'm going to put a little more raw umber just to make the value a little lighter. And so let's go ahead and just make some little indications here. Very calligraphic, if that's even a word. Let's just think of the calligraphy of the brush stroke. Just single little brush stroke like that. And so let's get some of the dark in here. Single brush stroke time, just right there. And then back here, just a few little little dabs of paint. And while I have this dark mixture, I'm going to go ahead and soften uh, the edge here and let that one be sharp, how it is already. And that is just to pull focus a little bit towards this area. So I'm going to soften this. This is very similar to something that a, uh, a DSLR camera would do or any kind of camera that you adjust the, the lens. So just soften this a little bit. And just lightly touching it just to uh, make the edge a little softer. And let's get this corner back. I notice we kind of lost it very simply. So now with some of the darker uh, so, sorry, some of the light on the dark areas of the hair. Uh, let's let's take some of the flesh tone. I'm almost tempted to use my uh, half tone brush. Or how about this? Let's use the brush that I use for the shadow of this area. So here's the brush that I used for this color. So let's just add a little bit of cobalt teal to it. Doesn't need to be too bright. So here we have a little brush stroke here. Get just a little glimpse of light. Just few little glimpses of light here and there. Scumbling it on basically. Just a little, little touch of light there. And of course here, let's get this little curve. Get some little nuances in here. Very simply, I'm just trying to 
describe the movement and the rhythm of the hair. Let's let some of these brush strokes here show. Let's make little swooping motions like this. Now with the light on the hair, uh, again, hopefully this will be another single brush stroke moment. So I'm going to take some of the blue that's on this side and add it to this brush. So a very light touch here and a heavier touch there. Didn't quite make it, so let's switch back to the dark brush. Very light pressure. Let's get that painterly effect. Let's just let a single brush stroke convey the overlapping of the hair here. So let's try again, just a little light touch and a more, more pressure here. So that ought to do it, something like that. A little more light here, why not? There's a little chop here, so I just aesthetically, I don't want a little sharp edge there, so let's just soften that. Here's the brush that I used for the background. Hopefully it still has some of the paint. And it does, so that fixes that edge right there. That's a little better. And let's not forget that there lives a little beauty mark, a little beauty mark right about here, maybe, maybe right about here. So I'm just using a little bit of the paint from the shadow mixture. Just about that ought to do it for the beauty mark. And so now let's wrap this painting up. So I'm going to use a pretty much just a cheap watercolor brush. And I'm gonna use this to um, soften some of the edges. So let's, let's look at this little edge right here. So let's just soften it. Just a few little touches there. That's all it takes. So I pretty much dry clean this brush, this little blending brush, if you wanna call it that. Uh, just rub it up against a paper towel so in case you're wondering how I clean that, that's how I clean this brush, just so I don't get any mineral spirits on it. Let's look at another edge, maybe this one. Soften this edge just a little bit. All it takes is just a few little touches to soften that. And this area here, just a little softer. And with that, we have the conclusion of this week's portrait painting demonstration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next video.